All right, cadets, Dr. Cook here uh, with MS200 Lecture. Now, I just want to start off with a brief review of where we're at with AGADAP and how the rest of this all fits together, and then a quick introduction to the concept of the operation. I want to start off today with a little bit of review all right, and show you where we've been going with all this. So we've learned about AGADAP, all right, which is really our big process for doing course of action development. All right, and step one, we're analyzing our relative combat power that might be asking the enemy's weaknesses, what are our strengths, how do we mitigate or uh, protect our weaknesses, and how do we take advantage of the enemy's weaknesses and mitigate their strengths. All right, we can do that comparison. All right, and we look at that by warfighting function. Then we go to generate options. That's really about turning back to doctrine. We can look at our forms of maneuver. All right, we have guidance about how to do these different things and give us some templates um, to help us think about what are the different ways I can do this. And then we can kind of lay those out and look at them and analyze them how uh, to decide on what we're going to do. All right, it's all about the characteristics of the offense our decisive operations, supporting operations, and how they all nest together. All right. um, then we can array our forces. Remember, at that step, we're just looking at generic forces. How many fire teams do I have? I don't care which one, of what types, and where do I put them to form the elements that fit into my doctrinal templates for the methods and um, for how I can execute my options. Right. And that's all about task organization, right? It's a generic task org at that point. Then we can develop that concept of operations, right? So we take that doctrine, we take the forces we have and how we've arrayed them together, and we can look at how we do that into our attack. Now that leads us into our phases of an offensive operation, which is what this lecture is gonna be about, right? In the broadest sense, we can break things out as before the objective, actions on the objective and actions after the or beyond the objective all right and we'll get a little bit more into that uh, with this discussion here but that's what we're talking about there with developing this concept of operations and we expand it out to get more detail into what we're doing for our mission right. then we've got to assign responsibilities so we already have done a bit of a generic task organization now we want to say all right this group of two fire teams is going to be first squad and over here, I've got uh, two rifle teams, plus I'm going to need uh, an anti-tank team with it. You know, is that an attachment from external? Is that, um, is that going to come from my weapons team internal? I need to cross uh, task those people. But how am I going to do that? And who are going to be the leaders for each of those elements? And actually putting uh, names and troops to the tasks. All right, and then the last step is producing a COA statement and sketch. All right, we'll have another lecture to talk about that and how we put those together. But really that comes down to it's just the way that we communicate all of this prior planning. Now all this prior planning should have gone into more detail than the simplicity that will get captured into the COA statement and sketch. And our written order will capture a lot more detail that came out of those. But that statement and sketch are just the way that we can communicate that concisely to our soldiers for execution. All right, so let's talk about concept of the operation. All right, when we're thinking about this, we've got to just look at how do we think this is going to work out? What do we see happening from start to finish? This is where we've got to use that brain housing group to make it work. Now, all this is about three things, activities, tasks, and events, all right? Uh, and putting those together in the right way, and what is the relationship between those three things? All right, that, so we synchronize all that, and it leads to accomplishing our mission. Now, there's some steps to developing that, right? So we look at our terrain and how do we use our strengths against enemy weaknesses and pair those all together, all right? We wanna to put together our indirect fire in such a way that'll support maneuver that we're doing. Then we gotta lay out our maneuver control measures and make sure that we're conveying our intent. We're preventing fratricide. We've got clear tasks and purposes and we know who is a decisive operation and who has got shaping operations. All right, and then we can determine the sustainment aspects that are going to be needed to make all of that happen and make it come together so we have a successful mission. All, right? all of that is concept, and the concept is just that thinking about it and, and getting it together um, as something that makes sense. All right, that's it for this lecture. Uh, see you in class.